My name is Michael Goodyear. I worked on Audrey and Daisy as post-production coordinator, and uh, Audrey and Daisy is a documentary that's premiering at Sundance this year. Audrey and Daisy is a film about high school girls who have gone through sexual assault. It follows the story of two particular girls from two different parts of the country, and it's a story that not a lot of girls tell. There was a lot of responsibility. I think in every project, the minute something's shot, you're always getting pressure from the directors. We want to see that. What's that look like? Can we get that cut together, put that next to these other things? And having to take a day or two to transcode all of this 4K footage is just going to slow down the process and create the extra problem of having to store all of this, these additional proxy files and track them all and just make everything a lot more complicated. So we really wanted something where we could shoot and drop it in a timeline natively and just start working. We were primarily working in 4K, but there was a lot of archival footage. We captured stuff from Hi8 tape, from home videos on DVD. The way we managed all the footage is they would shoot out in the field and it would come in and we'd ingest it into CatDV, which is our cataloging system. And that's where we did a majority of our logging. And then from there, we could just grab clips and hit the send to Premiere button and it just all moved to Premiere with all the metadata we needed. We just mapped the fields to certain columns in Premiere. From there we used Dynamic Link to send stuff over to After Effects and stabilize shots on occasion and add some graphic elements in there. Occasionally we would need to color grade footage when we were showing clips to our funders because we shot in S-Log and so in Premiere the Lumetri effect was incredibly powerful and easy to use. One of the great things about Media Encoder was being able to take uh, the full timeline of the film and send it to the Media Encoder queue and from there we could set ProRes export, the H.264 export, all of our different flavors and just hit go and walk away. At the beginning I didn't really know the power of the media browser built into Premiere and just being able to click on a project and see that whole project open up and load sequences from that old project. You can just have it, the sequence right there and you can grab the media cut and paste right from that old sequence into the project that you're working on and that speeds me up considerably. The editor on a documentary just needs access to everything and needs it all there and is constantly swapping pieces around and uh, changing the order of the structure and trying to see how the footage that we capture works best. That's why we picked Premiere. It was the only option at the time that, would, that could handle it.